and full of worldly strife. Time to head to the next stop. how to keep people on the edge of their seats. Ahem! Apologies for the delay, dear passengers. Something important came up, so I, the conductor, had to spend some time preparing. Yeah, what was so important? I thought everyone knew. Our next destination is the planet of Everyone's eager to disembark and get to that famous stellar hotel. But before we set off, I should remind everyone of three things. First, Penacone is located in Azdana, a star system brimming with memoria, which has historically been one of the macro voids that leaked out from the memory zone. Even after eons, the memoria concentration up ahead is above normal levels. Usually this wouldn't be a huge problem, but everyone's different, so if you exhibit any signs of dizziness, hallucination, distorted memories, or any other symptoms, you should take them seriously. Second, Penacone is a colony belonging to the Harmony family. It also marks the first time this family has extended a public invitation to other factions. Please remember that the Express has been invited as a guest and that we must adhere to any and all regulations. Got it. When in Rome, as they say. <laughs> Don't worry, Conductor. We definitely won't embarrass the nameless. Rome? Uh, anyway. Third and final. Rather than being a request, Pom Pom has a favor to ask of everyone. If you could... I hope that while you're all on vacation, you could spare some time to help inquire about a few of the nameless. Uh, allow me to explain. Just like most of the worlds that the Express calls at, Penacone is one of the stops along the Silver Tracks. Several millennia ago, it was an IPC frontier prison and it was the trailblaze that connected it to thousands of stars. During that time, the Astral Express once visited Penacone. As with all meetings, they inevitably lead to goodbyes. As the Express's logs indicate, it seems some passengers decided to call Penacone their permanent home. Don't worry, just think of it as returning to your hometown. Following the Express's departure, the Stellarons cut off contact to myriad worlds, and Penacone's ownership switched hands several times. Why did these nameless choose to stay here? How did the course of their subsequent lives unfold? And what legacies did they leave behind? Retracing our predecessor's footsteps. That is in itself an adventure, wouldn't you agree? Even if they left the stars behind them, their trailblaze would not be over. That's also what the conductor thinks, isn't it? According to the passenger list, the three people who got off were Tiernan, Legwork, and Rosalina, the Express's guard, mechanic, and surveyor, respectively. No supplementary details are available. Uh, just names and occupations? And they don't even sound like they're real names, either. This'll be like looking for a needle in a haystack. We'll just leave it to the stars of fate. Considering the Nameless's diversity, perhaps we might even stumble upon their descendants. Or, against the slimmest of chances, the very individuals themselves. We'll conclude today's navigation meeting on this point. There's a bit of time left before we jump. In the meantime, it might be a good idea to double check your bags. I'll broadcast an announcement before we jump!
There's still some time before the jump. I should talk to everyone. How's it going? All packed and ready? There probably won't be any surprises happening on family territory, which is a bit of a shame if you ask me. But hey, it's rare that we can take a break and let loose. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> well, adventures are exhilarating, but rest and recuperation is equally important. Rest and recuperation aside, don't forget Pom Pom's request. <laughs> the conductor has done plenty for us, and it's time to return that favor. You're the picture of calm, as always. Meanwhile, March 7th, buzzing around like a kid on a sugar rush. <laughs> a punchline with a straight face. I suppose that's your specialty. But regarding the family's invitation, I do have some details that I wish to discuss with everyone. Just not now. Let's enjoy our vacation for now. I spoke to Mr. Yank. I'll be staying on the express this time. I wish you all a delightful time in Penacone. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation, but I don't like bustling places. And <laughs> someone has to handle the work on the express. Pay no mind to the matters concerning the Xianzhou. Penacone isn't the final stop on our trip. We have plenty of time. Once everything is packed up, I will naturally catch up with all of you. Um, I'd advise double-checking your bags. Word is that the family's customs procedure can be quite demanding. Better to sort it out now than face issues at your hotel check-in. Peace broadcast. We are here to bring you the latest news from across the galaxy. 
The IPC and the Sienjo Alliance have renewed their trade agreement, bringing great economic benefits to both parties. The head of the armed archaeologists of the Intelligentsia Guild, Alan Jones, personally oversaw the excavation of the ancient tomb of Emperor Rupert I. The ruins rank as a Category Omega site on the Potential Disaster Index. Renowned songstress Robin has received an invitation to perform at Penacone's Charmony Festival. The Garden of Recollection has gathered memoria fragments from the lost world of Moonshield. The precious memories of this world will not be forgotten. Let's take a closer look at the details. Regarding the IPC and the Sienjo Alliance, the Sienjo La Fu has opted to renew the trade agreement. The agreement will help to open up markets and promote cooperation between the two sides in agriculture, industry, medicine, and culture, laying a solid foundation for a free, open, and prosperous business environment. At the signing of the agreement, friendly talks were held between Madame Yukong, Skyfaring Helmmaster of the La Fu, and a representative of the IPC's Marketing Development Department. The two sides reached a consensus on various issues, including the impact of interstellar security on the free market. The IPC also expressed their heartfelt concern for the Lawfu regarding the recent invasion by the Antimatter Legion and sent their condolences to the victims. The IPC strongly condemns the barbaric atrocities committed by the Antimatter Legion and conveys the Amber Lord's wish for preservation to all worlds ravaged by that wretched force. Emperor Rupert I left many horrific relics across the universe, and one of them, the Mechanical Emperor II, has captivated the interests of countless people since its discovery. The excavation of the tomb is led by the head of the armed archaeologists of the Intelligentsia Guild, Alan Drake One-Armed Jones, with assistance from Genius Society member Screwlum. It is hoped that the excavation of this metallic relic, which holds a Category Omega ranking on the Potential Disaster Index, will finally shed a light on its mysterious nature. According to records of the Emperor's deeds left behind by the Inorganic Legion, the original purpose of the site was to house the inventions inspired by the imagination of Rupert I. A spokesperson for the Intelligentsia Guild said, We have no way of knowing what amazing discoveries Jones will uncover, but we are hopeful that his findings will further our understanding of the Emperor and help save the universe from the horrors that he will bring with him when he returns. The Interrestrial Peace broadcast will be covering this story throughout the excavation. Penacony, the planet of festivities, announced that it will invite renowned singer Robin to perform at the Charmony Festival. Once every Amber Era, countless followers of the Harmony will attend this long-held tradition of the planet of festivities and together pray for a brighter and better future for the universe. Robin is a superstar whose voice is known throughout the cosmos. She has been the recipient of many top awards. It is believed that during the celebrations, Robin will sing a hymn for the Eon of the Harmony in the name of the family. The IPC will broadcast the entire event, sending the sounds of music and good wishes to worlds far and wide. As we all know, the Garden of Recollection has always been committed to the restoration of lost civilizations, igniting the spark of revival across the cosmos. According to reliable sources, thanks to the efforts of the Memo Keepers, all memoria fragments of the dead world of Moonshield have been salvaged. Moonshield was destroyed during an invasion by the Antimatter Legion, but with the combined efforts of the IPC and the Garden of Remembrance, the collection of information about the fallen world was recently declared a success. The Memo Keepers planned for it to be reborn in the pristine land of the Remembrance. 
The destruction can destroy any material thing, but it can never take away our hope. The IPC will provide whatever support and protection within its means for the long-term development of all civilizations across the universe, including those that have perished. And this is the end of our broadcast. Please tune in for our next episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Welcome to the Interastral Peace Broadcast. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to a new episode of Interastral Peace Broadcast. We are here to bring you the latest news from across the galaxy. The IPC and the Sienjo Alliance have renewed their trade agreement, bringing great economic benefits to both parties. The head of the armed archaeologists of the Intelligentsia Guild, Alan Jones, personally oversaw the excavation of the ancient tomb of Emperor Rupert I. The ruins rank as a Category Omega site on the Potential Disaster Index. Renowned songstress Robin has received an invitation to perform at Penacone's Charmony Festival. The Garden of Recollection has gathered memoria fragments from the lost world of Moonshield. The precious memories of this world will not be forgotten. Let's take a closer look at the details. Regarding the IPC and the Xianzhou Alliance, the Xianzhou La Fu has opted to renew the trade agreement. The agreement will help to open up markets and promote cooperation between the two sides in agriculture, industry, medicine, and culture, laying a solid foundation for a free, open, and prosperous business environment. At the signing of the agreement, friendly talks were held between Madame Yukong, Skyfaring Helmmaster of the La Fu, and a representative of the IPC's Marketing Development Department. The two sides reached a consensus on various issues, including the impact of interstellar security on the free market. The IPC also expressed their heartfelt concern for the Lawfu regarding the recent invasion by the Antimatter Legion and sent their condolences to the victims. The IPC strongly condemns the barbaric atrocities committed by the Antimatter Legion and conveys the Amber Lord's wish for preservation to all worlds ravaged by that wretched force. Emperor Rupert I left many horrific relics across the universe, and one of them, the Mechanical Emperor II, has captivated the interests of countless people since its discovery. The excavation of the tomb is led by the head of the armed archaeologists of the Intelligentsia Guild, Alan Drake One-Armed Jones, with assistance from Genius Society member Sproulum. It is hoped that the excavation of this metallic relic would hold a cat. Although, I hear that Penacone's Resort Hotel is pretty luxurious. I'm guessing their toiletries should be just as fancy. <laughs> that means I can make more room in my suitcase! What else should I bring? <laughs> you won't fit in the suitcase! Can't you walk? Uh, maybe I should bring some novels, or comic books? 
At least then I won't be too bored while staying in the hotel room. But these books are so heavy. Aw, this is hard. What else should I take? It's about time. I should find a seat. Not another one. Come with me. These questions have no meaning, but I will answer you as best as I can. This is the border between reality and the memory zone, a dreamscape. Right this moment, you and I have coincidentally shared the same dreamscape and appeared in each other's minds. This is the Land of Dreams' inaugural welcome for us. Worry not, for very quickly you will awaken from this dream. Forget everything that has transpired with naught but a faint lingering of loss. Pay no mind, for this forgetfulness happens with each new dawn. It is an occurrence that we have become accustomed to for so long. So, come with me. I'll take you home. Left, the end of the corridor. I will wait there for you. I'm not there. Turn back. Galaxy Ranger Acheron. This is what they call me. You can call me whatever you want. Open this door. Take a look at the mesmerizing dreamscape. Well, you can still remember. This is... Oh, no. This way? After you. Am I supposed to walk? How is this even possible? Why not? She can hear the thought. We're almost there. Can you still walk? <sighs> you're funny. If you can crack jokes, you're probably fine. Don't stop. Don't turn back. Don't look down. Or up, for that matter. These voices... They are just shadows of the dreamscape. Pay no heed to them. We're here. Welcome to the Reverie! May you experience an unforgettable holiday. 
If you need help checking in, please head straight to the concierge. Leave this realm, and rise as you would on any other day. Forget this fortuitous encounter and return whence you came. But before you do, I would make a request of you. You may think it's somewhat strange, perhaps even rude, but I wish to know. Have we met somewhere before? You evoke memories of an old friend. In the haze of my recollections, he crossed blades with me. Much like this surreal dreamscape where we stood close, yet forever out of reach. May I ask you a few more questions? I tend to forget things, which is why, rather than memories, I'm accustomed to using my emotions to capture what I normally wouldn't otherwise. The answer is inconsequential. Your spontaneous reaction is what matters. For instance, when you awaken in your room, your lips speak several names. Are they your companions? Family? Enemies? You seem to have forged unbreakable bonds with many people and many incidents. Might I ask if you fear losing these bonds? Hmm. Then, if there was a vast dreamscape, so lifelike it's indistinguishable from reality. There, no one faces life's separations or deaths. Everyone attains their deserved happiness and lives joyfully ever after. I would ask, would you wish to stay? Now, imagine if this splendid dream were fated to fall apart. Friends, family, strangers, followed by the gentle breeze, soaring birds, the stars, and ultimately yourself. Everyone and every face they remember, the joy and the heartaches, the vows sealed and those left hanging, all will inevitably march towards a predetermined ending. If you had grasped the journey's finale right from its inception, I would ask, would you still embark on this journey? I know this is hard, you don't have to be hard-pressed to make a decision. As I have said, the answer is inconsequential. Hearing, touch, thought, through these you gain emotions. Cherish them. With emotions we make choices. And so we return to the original question. I would ask, do you still remember me? Understand. How interesting. For a split second it felt like countless versions of you, alike yet distinct, gave entirely different responses. That was my final question. Thank you. 
We all have our paths to walk, so we shall bid our farewells. The Golden Dream is getting restless. In the coming nights of long, I'm afraid you will face many tribulations and witness many tragedies. And finally, your sight will only see black and white. But please believe me that in that monochrome world, there will be a glimpse of fleeting red. And when you make a choice, it will reappear before you once more. What you must do now is ponder its significance. And then you can return to the waking world. That's where we'll find our answers. still packing her luggage? <laughs> You're up? How's your prep going? Walt and Himiko beat us to the punch. But I stuck around for you! Let's get going! Mm, shall we go meet up with them now? The planet of festivities! The universe's biggest and fanciest amusement park awaits! Calls. Our bags probably know what it feels like to be a celebrity now with all that attention. I wouldn't have put it past them to try and nab that Stellaron from inside you. Uh, aside from that, I have to say the family has been really accommodating. Well, the hassle was worth it. Just look at this grand hotel lobby! And those endless rows! They're all rooms, right? Just think of the number of guests staying here! <laughs> Where are our rooms? But come on! Mr. Yang and the rest must be at the front desk! Let's hurry up and meet them there! Welcome to the Reverie! May you experience an unforgettable holiday. Uh, <clears throat> if you need help checking in, please head straight to the concierge. Uh, 
I'm Misha, a bellboy working here on Penacony. Pleased to be at your service. If you need help with your baggage... Uh, over here. Something's not right. Should you need assistance with moving luggage to your room, feel free to contact me. Uh, please, go ahead. Don't keep your friend waiting. about. We've just... I'm sorry, but your name really isn't in the system. But in the information I received from the Astral Express, it states that we already reserved rooms. Please, check again for me. Yes, ma'am. Please give me a moment. The Astral Express, four platinum guest rooms, whose names include Mr. Welt Yang, Miss Himiko, Miss March 7th, and... Mr. Don Hung. These are the only four names on the reservation list. Don Hung. I... I understand. No wonder our friend's name here is missing. When we responded to the family's invitation, he hadn't even arrived on the express. Uh, something came up in Don Hung's schedule, and he couldn't make it. I have an idea. Uh, could you reassign his room? It's still the same number of people. He's a new passenger aboard our Astral Express. We can vouch for his status. I... even if that is so, I'm afraid... No, I'm not doubting your status. It's just... Well, it's just that right now, we're on the eve of the Charmony Festival. Pentagoni's most important moment of every era. And with the family's invite, all guests from all over the cosmos have thronged this place. Hotel security is on high alert with zero room for error. And with such a last-minute change, it really isn't something that this young lady's words can resolve on a whim. My esteemed guests from the Astral Express, please do not make it harder for her. We are sorry for all the trouble our check-in seems to have caused. Might I ask for your name? I am the humble aventurine of the IPC Strategic Investment Department, a non-performing asset liquidation specialist and subordinate to Supervisor Diamond. I was cordially invited by the watchmaker. <laughs> I also happen to be a traveler that's had to stand behind you for quite a while. Leave it to me. I've heard that the IPC has also received Penacone's invitation, so forgive me if I'm mistaken, but you must be the representative. The IPC's elite certainly does have an extraordinary air about them. I suppose such an exceptional figure such as yourself wouldn't mind paving a convenience for us? I, I must be hearing things. Paving a convenience? Shouldn't I be saying this to you instead? I've been waiting here for more than ten minutes. Do you know how many credits ten minutes is worth to me? It must be an inordinate number. Which is why now, Mr. Aventurine, I have an investment that you absolutely cannot miss out on. The IPC's influence runs deep and wide, and their word wields the utmost authority. We hope to borrow your status to vouch for him. As such, you won't just be sparing much of your invaluable time, but also forging new friendships. <laughs> well, this is interesting. And how will my new friends benefit me? Now this is a topic very much worth getting into. Just as we are guests of the Watchmaker, why don't we make ourselves comfortable in Penacony before getting to know each other more elaborately? <laughs> Sounds good.
But, Miss Navigator, I must point out that... If I do something about it now, the time saved is from my own effort, not a favor from you all. <sighs> but, what you said in the second half... I loved it. Friends, yes, nothing is more precious than friends. Especially a righteous trailblazer like a nameless. Going forward on this Panacone trip, I'll be counting on all my trailblazer friends here. Looking forward to a delightful time with you all. I'm glad you've put it this way. So about the vouching... And there you go, miss. Please allow him to check in on my account. I have an appointment with the family's Mr. Sunday. I will ask him to handle this matter later. Don't worry, I won't cause you any trouble. Um, but... Ali, just a moment. The family cannot allow guests to enter a dream while bearing burdens. Oh, speak of the devil, look who's here. It's Sunday. The most handsome man in Panicone. Along with a singer renowned across the universe, Robin. He said you were the most dashing person in Panicone. How interesting. I've kept you waiting, Mr. Aventurine. This way, please. Let us speak in private. Yes. Please come this way and rest your feet. Wait, what? You're... Hello, friend. How have you been? I sincerely hope you don't mind. My apologies for any perceived slight. To show my sincerity, I offer you 10,000 credits as a gesture of goodwill. How upright! I like you. I must have you as a friend. Here, 20,000 credits. Please excuse me, I have some matters to attend to, so I must depart, but I'm sure we'll meet again soon. yourself would be a fan of mine. Oh, it really is, Robin. To run into her in person here. It is an honor to meet everyone. Are you also a member of the family on Penacone like him? <laughs> Truth be told, I am a guest like everyone. Penacone is my hometown, but I left when I was older. I was graciously invited this time to return and sing a song at the Charmony Festival. The person you speak of is Sunday, my senior, and one of the local leaders at Penacony. He is also the organizer of this era's Charmony Festival. He heard you all ran into some difficulties and sent me here to provide aid. Alas, I arrived a little later than usual. I sincerely apologize for any unpleasantness during your stay. Please, be at ease. I have instructed Miss Allie to resolve the system error as soon as possible. I have also upgraded your rooms as token compensation. Please wait a moment for the hotel to arrange for suitable accommodation. Mr. Aventurine has an appointment with the Oak family and has checked in prior. On his behalf, I extend his apologies to everyone of the Astral Express and wish for an amicable partnership moving forward. 
thank you for stepping in to resolve this matter. But are you sure about the rooms? I wouldn't want your other guests to feel we were being given preferential treatment. Please, rest assured that the family will personally undertake communications to handle this. It is only right that we, as the actual administrators, relieve you of any problems during your visit in Panacone. I apologize for taking up everyone's precious time, and we shan't keep you any longer. If you need anything else while in Panacone, the family stands ready to serve. May our dreams be beautiful and pleasant. <sighs> it's just one surprise after another! But since that Mr... Which day was he? Sunday! Since Mr. Sunday's vouched for us, I guess we can finally check in normally? so too. It's most likely some rule of Penacone's, or the family's. Okay, there's no queue in the lobby now. Let's go find Miss Owie. <sighs> Esteemed guests of the Astral Express, your check-in procedure is complete. <sighs> Please forgive us for any previous inconvenience caused. This is your dreamscape pass. It serves as your hotel room key, as well as a directory of all the amenities and information you require at the Reverie. It even provides smart assistance. At the same time, it is also Penacone's special, one-of-a-kind souvenir that belongs only to you. You can use the dreamscape pass's provided clock-in feature to record every moment of your wonderful dream. Save your favorite happy bits and create a dreamscape scrapbook that is uniquely yours. Regarding the method of usage, the dreamscape pass will guide you through the process. I wish you all pleasant dreams in Penacone. You may take the elevator over there to reach your guest rooms. All right, let's move out. Majestic Metropolis! What exactly would that look like? Oh, I can't wait! Uh, 
Our rooms are down this way. This is a long hallway. Is it just me, or is this hotel too big for its own good? She's the girl of my dreams. Quit giving me the stink eye. Best not to take that. We're finally here. Let's all head to our rooms first and put down our bags. Well, how about a drink first? Penicone's Soul Glad is very famous. Go on. We may be thinking of the same thing. Do you remember the invite that the Express received? The family's esteemed guests are cordially invited to Benaconi to participate in our grand celebration. That's why we're here in the first place. You recall correctly, but there was more to this invite. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penaconi, and thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? <laughs> I don't remember that part of the invite. You mean there was a, a hidden message? This is the part that intrigues me. The invite sent by the family was nothing more than a music box that, when wound, would play an accompanying tune. But the box that was sent to us was slightly unusual. The music it played had off-key notes in the background. I recorded these dissonant notes, and they were a perfect match with the gravity wave frequency when the Express made its warp jump. Also, the Express engine's spatial curvature was its encryption key. A distress call method regularly used by the Nameless. I can't be certain. It may be a masked fool's trap. From the execution itself, the Riddlers or Inquisition spirits could have done this themselves. When did you discover this? When we were handling that Law Fu Stellaron matter. I told Pom Pom about it first thing. It's no wonder that IPC Ambassador also mentioned this watchmaker. The invite he received must also have contained a hidden message, and it seems like he decoded it. There's something else on my mind. When the invite was brought up, that family leader mentioned being one of the actual administrators of Penaconi, and that it was their duty to relieve us of any problems. In hindsight, there was more to that statement. He also had Miss Robin with him. I'm no singer, but her voice sounded a little strange. Would a singer really take to the stage if their voice wasn't in top shape? Are you saying you suspect that the family did not send the invite and is hiding something from us? 
It's possible. The fact that the family sent out invites to the other factions is already unusual, and your discovery confirms that there could be a third party involved. I take back what I said. This event is becoming more interesting with each passing second. Why didn't you tell the others? We shouldn't interfere if this is just an internal affair of Penicone or the family. But you said so yourself. This could concern the Trailblaze. Well, I did. Which is why... Before we set off, I told March 7th and Don Hung about this. <laughs> so I was the only one kept in the dark then. is the purpose of gathering all of the factions into Penicone? And why does the family choose to remain silent about their knowledge of this? There are too many unanswered questions. We must use the utmost caution before we go deeper. Right now, let's just focus on the conductor's request. We'll collect intel while enjoying this wonderful vacation. Penicone is, after all, a famed resort of the cosmos. Not many get a chance to even visit in their lifetime. Head back to your rooms, get some rest, and prepare to enter the dreamscape. It's time to head back to my room. Before entering the dream, I should probably talk to the rest. Life is as ephemeral as dew on a leaf, and full of worldly strife. is as ephemeral as dew on a leaf, and full of worldly strife. is a little, uh, <laughs> loud for my taste. So this is how Astral High Society does things, huh? <laughs> they say he's a historically important figure in Penacone, and tales of his life have been handed down over generations. Such tales encourage believers to come to the planet of festivities to pursue their dreams. He's an interesting fellow, that's for sure, and his legacy still has the power to draw people in. But how and why he's involved with that invite, and why his name popped up in the encrypted message allegedly sent by a nameless, I've got no leads for now. The family believes in the harmony, and their altruism is well known across the stars, a trait that is intimately tied to Penacone's stability and prosperity. But some factions have always been wary of the family, uh, suspecting that their benevolence and eloquence belie an ulterior motive. So far, it seems to me that the family treats their guests with courtesy, so... I don't think we need to worry about that for now. The Dream Penicone is divided into 12 moments, 
Personally, I'm interested in the moment of soul. It's a visual dreamscape steeped in Penacone's history and civilization. Penacone's Grand Museum, the Primal Waking Library, the Paperfold Academy. The pasts that we chase may be stored in these places. Past the guest room's dream pool is the real Panacone. Let's get ready to move out. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. <laughs>
Why is my room door open? Seems the older I get, the harder it is to fall asleep. I can't sleep from all the excitement, huh? I can't wait to experience the dream world! Uh, the moment of dusk, obviously! How can you not visit the shopping paradise when you're at the resort of all resorts? I'm all ready to fill my bags to the brim. Hmm, after doing my shopping, I'll get all dolled up in an evening gown to attend Miss Robin's show at Penacone Grand Theater. Welt noticed it too, about how Miss Robin's voice sounded somewhat weary. I can't quite put my finger on it. But it was different than usual? Could she be tired out from her cosmic concert tour? Insisting on performing under such circumstances. Miss Robin is a superstar among celebrities! Here I was thinking of some good old relaxation, but nope. This event is a wild ride. The various factions deciphering the riddle, a power struggle of past legacies. It feels like we're in a live action detective saga. Who knows? Maybe we'll even witness classic scenarios like family feuds, tragic losses, worlds torn apart, espionage situations, Rivers running red with blood! Stuff like that! This is simply too thrilling! Uh, don't worry. Welt and Himeko will have our backs if things go wrong. Let's just make the most of it all while we're here. That's right, pal. <laughs> Calm down. I'm just here to soak in the festive vibe. This may be your room now, but half a system hour ago, it was still mine. 
A lucky block number, a lucky floor, a lucky room number. You have no idea how much I went through to book this precious space. And now I've given it to you. Treasure it well, friend. Of course. What, you thought the family acted simply out of their own goodwill? Panacone's a true blue land of dreams. How many across the stars would spend half their lives just to acquire an admission ticket into the Reverie? <laughs> Think about the type of people who can even afford to stay here. If it wasn't for my brilliant plan, you think the family would offend those bigwigs just to sate the paltry whims of an unsought guest such as yourself? So sit down and let's have a chat. With everything said and done, I think I deserve at least this much, right? Cutting to the chase. <laughs> I like that. Simply put, my friend, I need your help. You may or may not know this, but Panacone's far murkier than it seems. The family's eyes are everywhere, but you get the drift. My goal is simple. Help the IPC retrieve some things that belong to them in the first place. If you agree, when this is done, you will stand to reap great rewards, as well as the preservation's protection. It's clear you're not just one of the crowd. <laughs> you possess a distinct quality, so magnetic that it could sway the outcome of any game. That Power, you really don't wish to use it. Or you don't want to be rid of it. Why not use it to etch your name across the stars? The power that men both fear and desire is right in the palms of your hands. Mr. Stellaron, have I hit the nail on the head? <laughs> I know now. You don't have to answer me now. Sit on it for a while. When the time is right, I will look for you again. Of course, you can confer with your colleagues as well. Or go as far as to use me in turn. I welcome that notion. Because it will also show me your true value. I don't do deals where I'm on the losing end, so I hope that friends don't let me down.
<laughs> Very well. Oh yes, before I go, let's play another game. A simple game to get to know each other better. You just have to guess which hand the chip is hiding in. It'll help me get a better grasp on your personality and the way you do things. Left or right? Get ready. I'm about to reveal the answer. No? I didn't get your answer. Oh, but that's fine, because... Friend, the game has already begun. Allow me to make you an offer. One you can't refuse. No reason to choose otherwise. Their choice. Hello there. Huh? What are you doing in my room? Your room? <laughs> well played, friend. You haven't been in Penacony long, but you already know how to rope people into your cause. Oh, don't misunderstand. That was a mere reminder. This place runs deep with plenty of unsavory characters. Don't forget to stay on your toes. Like, keeping your door closed. <laughs> I'll make my exit now. Have a pleasant stay. <sighs> Why haven't you left? Why do I have to? <sighs> have I come to the wrong room? <sighs> this can't be. Before I said anything, I even made sure that I had the right room number. Do I have the wrong wing or even the wrong lock? <sighs> I'm sorry, this hotel is huge and the hallways all look the same. It's easy to get lost in here. Anyway. As long as you're all right. I should return to my room, too. But before I go, can I ask you a question? You may think it's somewhat strange, perhaps even rude. But I wish to know, have we met somewhere before? Is that so? I haven't been able to shake off this familiar feeling since just now. Maybe this is what they call deja vu. <laughs> or it could purely be serendipity. This is your name, isn't it? Pleased to meet you. <laughs> you forget. That man mentioned it before he left. My memory's not very good, but it's not so bad that I can't remember details from just minutes ago. Galaxy Ranger Acheron. This is what they call me. You can call me whatever you want. I doubt we'll meet again. Lastly, a gentle reminder. There are people who possess unwavering resolution and faith, even unto death, and they do not wield such conviction for good. And on that man's face, I see such a similar expression. One who wears a blade must use it to cut, eventually. And when a gambler has nothing to lose on the table, he will surely go for broke and bet it all on a final hand. That is all I can say. I thought you should know all this before making a choice. Goodbye. Acheron left. Strange. 
I can't shake off this odd feeling I have. Uh, forget it. It's taken a while, but at least I can finally enter the dream. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, can you point me in the direction of the lobby? All these hallways really look the same to me. Seems like it's over. Time to work the dream pool according to the Dreamscape Pass's instructions. Welcome to Pinaconi, honored guest. Welcome, welcome to Pinaconi, honored guest. Very soon, all Please relax. Feel the ebb and flow of your body. Just focus on breathing and imagine you're in paradise. Imagine a dreamland. <laughs> Is it ratio? Why the long face? Hey, I just realized. Where's that handsome bust of yours? You're late. By four minutes and sixteen seconds. You better have solved the mystery of Akavili's fall. Otherwise, I suggest not tangling with the nameless. <laughs> you mean you don't believe me when I say I truly wish to befriend them? Glamorous people do not make friends. Fun fact, the Atini Peacock boasts one of the universe's more jarring songs, and your choice of attire is somewhat peacock-esque. <laughs> it seems this peacock is short of a feather or two. The family's been rummaging through your things, haven't they? Yeah, by that gray-suited fellow. All the cash gifts and the box containing the cornerstones. Huh? Where are you going? Back home. To tell the corporation that some idiot ruined everything. <laughs> it's nothing more than a few rocks. Why so serious? <laughs> Who cares if they're gone? Without that aventurine stone, you're nothing more than a doomed Sigonian thrall, sentenced to die by the IPC. Or is that serial number on your neck a cherished memento from the Amber Lord? <laughs> you're funny, I'll give you that. It appears our erudite friend has done his homework. It's my job. How would a gambler wrest Penacony back from the IPC otherwise? <laughs> Don't worry, Doctor. I have my ways. The family fears interference from the IPC, hence their constant intervention. 
more to play devil's advocate, perhaps Panagoni might have always been a ruse under the guise of the Harmony. If you ask me, that invite is nothing but a self-planted diversion. A red herring. Or... Maybe they're thinking of pulling off something big during the Charmony Festival. Or someone else made the invite, and they acquiesced to elevating the magnitude of the plan. <laughs> well, regardless, be it the family or the Watchmaker's legacy, as long as they're all useful to me. Get to the point. What's your plan? <laughs> well, no need to expand on that now. It's not yet time to reveal my trump card. <laughs> Damned gambler. Any true collaboration demands trust. Did that notion somehow escape your Sigonian upbringing? <laughs> then, do you trust me? That depends on you. Hmm, so you don't trust me either. Now that was easy, wasn't it? Also, I didn't go to school, and my parents didn't teach me any of that. A pity. They left before they could impart any life lessons. Uh, I did not mean to offend. None taken. But they did teach me that friends are weapons of the Avgens. Even under the watchful eye of the Harmony, our friends' performances have far exceeded my expectations. Let's see. The Garden of Recollection and the Astral Express have already made contact. The Annihilation Gang... I can't really count on them. The Knights of Beauty haven't given their answer, and as for the bunch at the Tavern... Speaking of which, I ran into a woman just now who introduced herself as a Galaxy Ranger. The whole conversation felt... off. Help me look into her... Huh? <laughs> oh, you don't really disdain me that much, do you? Well, seems like I'm on my own again. So this is the dreamscape? The atmosphere here creeps me out. What was that weird noise just now? A note? This way! Can you see me? Over here! Please, come this way! I thought I heard a familiar voice. Is it? Coming from the painting? Ah, you're here. Wonderful. Welcome to the Gallery of Thoughts. You can think of this as the entrance to the Golden Hour. I'm here to provide guidance to our guests. Huh? You remember me? I'm so glad. This is a temporary interchange, so it looks a little rundown. The reverie in the dreamscape is currently undergoing a revamp. I apologize for any unpleasantness in your stay, but if you enter the Golden Hour, I'm sure all your troubles will dissipate in an instant. Note? Did you find it in the room? It... Wasn't trash left behind by the previous guest, was it? It was my mistake. I failed to tidy up properly and caused an inconvenience for you. I'm truly sorry. You've perhaps read about it in your dreamscape pass, but I can explain it one more time. Golden Hour is one of the twelve dreamscapes in Penacony and its time coincides with midnight. Here, the dream's time is forever stuck in the moment before midnight. Tomorrow will not come, and this night of revelry will never end. Uh, but that doesn't mean that time is stopped in the dream. 
to avoid any physical or mental burden on guests, time in the dream has been synced with realities. So don't worry. Oh, you're asking about the referee in the dreamscape, right? I'm not sure exactly either. I'm sorry. You just go right through that door to reach Golden Hour. I wish you an unforgettable dream. Behind this door is the real Venaconi. I'm looking forward to it. after all. It seems like our guest here hasn't gotten used to the transition. Fret not. Feeling a sense of weightlessness is normal for new visitors. Robin, please guide our friend in getting more comfortable with the new environment. Leave it to me. your state of mind for you to feel more at ease. Relax! Just did some tuning on you with the resonance of the harmony to allow you to control your limbs freely in the dreamscape. Essentially, the dream of Panacone is a world formed by memoria. Only by fully understanding its nature can you move freely within it. It's like learning to swim. It's easy to sink at first when you aren't accustomed to the water, but once you get the hang of it, you can float and swim on the surface effortlessly. Well, theoretically you can, but it would be very difficult to pull off. After all, we don't really have an in-depth understanding of the Memoria yet. Unless you're one of the memo keepers of the Garden of Recollection, it can be difficult at first to manipulate the Memoria as you wish. But once you've been tuned by the Harmony, you can use the same laws of physics from the real world to understand how the dream world works. Oh, oops. <laughs> I've fallen into my professional habits again. I just can't seem to shake off this urge to be a know-it-all. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's always like that. Please, enjoy the beautiful dreamscape the family has built for everyone. 
We shall take our leave. Have a blast! Dreamscape sales store. Should I visit it? Oh, this place is bustling. There are so many people living in the dreamscape. Just move? According to the map, that's the Dreamscape sales store. Is that according to the map? That's the Dreamscape sales store. Is that a giant eyeball? From the top notch productions of Glock Studios to private donations. <laughs> we have it all! If I'm not mistaken, this is your first visit to Pentacle, isn't it? Please be rest assured that Dr. Edward. We'll provide the best service you can find in helping you purchase your first dreamscape and indulge in an exclusive and marvelous dreamland journey. <laughs> and that's the end of my analysis. I'm sure you'll be a fan of this 
drain bottle. It's a contribution from an anonymous donor and is said to contain the memory of the fallen Eon Nakafili. I can assure you that this dream bubble is perfect for you. It's the magic of psychoanalysis. Let's begin. Please close your eyes and rest your forehead against the dream. Trailblazer from the Astral Express. Do you plead guilty? I won't make any explanatory or leading comments on the content of this dream bubble. In the dream bubble, you will be living through another person's past memories. You will experience what the original owner of the memory once experienced. If any details are missing from the dream bubble, your subconscious will make up for it by substituting the missing content with something similar. are beyond pardon. But I respect every individual's right to carry out volunteer work. Give this place a thorough cleaning! <laughs> My apologies. When I received this dream bubble, some of the audio tracks were missing. Perhaps even the memorial is unable to transmit the voice of Achivelli. However, I can make some adjustments to the dream bubble to improve your experience. <laughs> Meaning you can choose anyone's voice for Achivelli. As long as it's a voice you're familiar with, I'll be able to replicate it in your subconscious. The subconscious has vast potential, sir. Well, please, make a decision. I'll do my best to fulfill your needs. Splendid! I'm rendering it as we speak. The replication is complete. Now you can enjoy an enhanced dreamscape experience. Do you, as well as the other passengers, Take responsibility for the following malicious conduct. You rode snowmobiles into the Tychian Stadium and disrupted the match, causing the match to be suspended. Because of you, 20 trailblazers were forced to repair the severely damaged exterior of the stadium for three months without pay. Do you plead guilty to this charge? Yes! I plead guilty. You sneaked into the high zoo and splurged half an Amber Era's crew budget on 250 nose walker cubs. You kept them in the restroom where they were left to breed and multiply uncontrollably, causing other carriages to be filled with sewage. Do you plead guilty to this charge? Yes, I plead guilty. You barged into the kitchen of the dining carriage claiming that the whole area needed disinfection. This resulted in the loss of 42 crispy, crumbly pawpaw pies. And because you also took the last serving of the express special in the fridge, I was left starving. Do you plead guilty to this charge? The first one is clearly a result of your own doing. But I do admit to consuming the last serving of the express special. Ahem. Don't get carried away just yet. This is only the beginning of your list of culinary offenses. There are cases of entire entries disappearing from the Express Data Bank. Plants in the parlor car being watered with soul clad. Disrupting the conductor's rest with noise. And a break-in to the conductor's exclusive snack vault. 
let me reiterate that I won't make any explanatory or leading comments on the content of this dream. And that's not even half the list. There are a total of 46 cases of malicious conduct. Do you admit to being the culprit in every case? Uh, sorry. I am indeed the worst nameless in the universe. No, you are not. Could there be anyone worse than me? Of course there is. Who? That guy who blew up the train into two pieces. That's all for the content of this dream bubble. How's your experience? <laughs> This dream bubble aligns with what you desire in your subconscious. If you're interested in experiencing the dream bubble again, you can purchase it with credits. This dream bubble is indeed pricey. Still, please give it some consideration. Well, are you going to buy it? find some clues about the Nameless up here. Well, can't expect it to be that easy. She went that way! Get her! going on? What's all the commotion about? Don't even think about running away. You stole away. an accomplice. Ha! Good work! Now we can nab them both in one go! That's enough, boys. Uh, sir, sir! What's gotten into you all? Open your eyes and take a good look. 
Is this lady the stowaway we're looking for? Huh? Who, who's this? Uh, don't you know him? Look at his brown hair and grey vest. Uh, he's the officer, sent here by the family to maintain order at the Charmony Festival. I see. Sir, the thing is, we're trying to apprehend a stowaway. And that young lady there looks very suspicious. We're sure she's the one. That's nonsense. Take another look, will ya? The witness report says that the suspect is a lad with silver hair, and you guys are going after a girl with silver hair. Does that even make sense? She's our guest. <sighs> well, just get out of my way and I'll take care of this. Yes, yes sir. sir. Sorry for all the trouble you went through back there. I'm Gallagher from the Bloodhound family, and those idiots are some young bloodhounds I've been training. Because of their youth and inexperience, they mistook an honored guest of Penacone for a criminal. This is indeed a regrettable mistake. I'd like to offer my sincerest apology to you on behalf of the Bloodhound family. The Bloodhound family are guards of the Dreamscape. We're in charge of security here, and our duties include arresting people who try to enter our world illegally. We got a tip that some criminals were planning to take advantage of the festivities around the Charmin Festival to sneak into Penacone. Now that the festival is just around the corner, there are likely many shady characters lurking around. Huh? Don't worry. I believe this is just a misunderstanding. How could such a lovely girl like you be a stowaway? Uh, thanks. Without your kind help, I wouldn't know what to do. Just part of the job. <laughs> I need to get going. If you need help, you can reach out to me through the young bloodhounds in this area. I wish you an enjoyable experience in this land of dreams. One. If it hadn't been for you, I might have been taken away by them. <laughs> You're funny. By the way, I've just noticed. You're nameless, right? Is this your first time here on Pentacony? Peace Broadcast recently did a whole segment about your glorious achievements. I also know that you guys often travel around different places in the cosmos. Did the family invite you here? Uh, I'd be happy to show you around. Although the Bloodhounds mistook me for a stowaway, I'm actually a local. My name is Firefly, and I'm from the Iris family. I work as a stage performer, although right now I'm just an extra. When there are no acting gigs, I work as a guide near Glocks Avenue. If you don't mind, I can show you all the exciting things around here. Maybe if I do my job as a guide, people will stop suspecting me. <laughs> Glad to hear that. After all, you just did me a huge favor. Over here! It's not a bad idea to get to know about this place. luxury goods, apparel, trendy toys, and even cars. As long as you have enough alfalfa coins, you can buy anything you fancy. 
Items purchased in the dreamscape can also be brought into reality through an extra service. Unfortunately, the transfer of automobiles to the real world is not available at the moment. You can come back for them next time. Just outside the mall is the plaza! Follow me! I'll buy you a nice meal. Dream, hunger is the most precious spice. Well, you can find all kinds of local delicacies here. Clocky pizza, oat cake rolls, alfalfa salad, and the classic Soul Glad. Feel free to pick up anything you like. Today, it's my treat. <laughs> You're welcome. told you about earlier. If we keep going, we'll reach Glax Avenue, which is the road to Golden Hour. show you something interesting. Look! That's the statue of Clocky, Penicone's famous cartoon character. It's the oldest and most famous animation from Penicone. It follows the adventurous life of Clocky and his friends in the town of Dreamville. To date, over 10,000 episodes of air. Ominous? Clocky is a household name here. There would never be anything ominous about him. Right? By the way, do you know that Clocky's design is said to be inspired by none other than the legendary watchmaker?
can't believe you haven't heard of him. He was a legendary tycoon in the history of Penacony, the founder of the Dreamscape, the man who turned dreams into reality. There are different stories out there about the Watchmaker's origin. Some said he was a traveling merchant from beyond the sky. Some claim that he was exiled to Penacony as a prisoner. And some speculate that he wasn't even a real person, just a symbol. The true story is anyone's guess, but everyone aspires to emulate his success and be the next watchmaker. As his inspiring story became known across the cosmos, those with a dream flocked to Penacony in droves. They held feast after feast, eventually building the planet of festivities we have today. Everyone in Penacony knows this name. The cartoon character Clocky is portrayed as reckless and full of hot air. But I believe the real watchmaker was a nameless. After all, creating the dreamscape sounds like just the kind of thing a trailblazer would do. Hmm. Hold on. If the watchmaker really was a nameless, wouldn't that make him your predecessor? Would you like to take a picture with him? My pleasure. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Help! Help me! Huh? What's that? Oh, it looks like there's something on Clocky's face. Help! Help me! Pull me up! Help me! You want a photo with him? Sure. It's done! It came out. Help! Help! Is there something wrong with Clocky's statue? Why did you suddenly jump just now? Really? You jumped just now. It was really sudden, too. Well, <laughs> if you're okay, let's move on to the next stop which is just a stone throw away from here. Please follow me. Can you see that building in the distance? That's the famous Grand Theater, another great landmark of Penacone. That's a pretty unique shape, doesn't he? In the real world, it was originally the central prison of Astana. The family renovated it in the dreamscape and transformed it into the glorious Penacone Grand Theater. Since the moment it was built, the Grand Theater has graced the entire dreamscape with its rendition of the Odes of Harmony. During the Once in an Era Charmony Festival, 
family members will gather at the theater to welcome the harmonious choir that blesses Penacone with everlasting peace. And here we are, the best viewing spot in all of Golden Hour. Look, there is even a telescope here. When the Charmony Festival arrives, remember to be here early if you want to get a seat. Next, a b oh, my dream right before my eyes. It's a majestic fall of art. close to me. This is the largest park in Golden Hour. It represents the soda culture of Penacone. The gigantic soda bottle houses the headquarters of the Soulglad Enterprise. Soulglad is said to have originated from a sweet medicinal syrup popular during the prison era. Invented by a man named Susa, it was thus called the Sisa Juice. Ideen, an interstellar traveling merchant, saw the potential in the beverage and purchased the formula. Ideon then carbonated the beverage and renamed it Soulglad. He also pioneered the school of thought known as Syrupism, in which he promoted the consumption of Soulglad as a new kind of lifestyle. And just like that, he created a commercial miracle. Did you know, one of the ingredients in the original recipe for Susa juice, known as Dream Leaf, has gone extinct. That means the only place you can get a taste of a pop gold soul glad is in Penacone's Dreamscape. Now this is also the only place where one can fully experience the core values of syrupism. you around. See these musical instruments playing themselves with no human performer in Penacone? Many objects and facilities have gained self-awareness due to the influence of the Memoria. After being tamed by the family, some of them formed the Sweet Dreams troupe to provide entertainment for guests. Careful, though, sometimes these animated objects can be affected by dangerous emotions or memories and, uh, transform into the destructive dream jolt truth. <laughs> if you ever run into them, go ask the security guards nearby for help. Hey, there's a ride attendant over there. Let me get some ideas. Hi there! This is my friend's first visit to Pinnacle. May I get some ID tokens for him? Of course! Please show me your dreamscape pass. Name. Here's your dreamscape pass and tokens. Be sure to keep a good hold of them. Have a good time! How many tokens are there? Ten! You may now enjoy the attractions in Pinnacle to the fullest. Nearby. Our goal is to use all the tokens. Let's do it! Let me see, which one should we try first? Since this is your first time here, I say we start with the easiest games. The Dreamy Slots and Lucky Wheel are pretty straightforward.
Please do not hit the entertainment facilities. Taking Firefly so long. Huh? She's heading towards the bar? used up all the tokens. Time to meet Firefly. people can find solace here. <laughs> I really appreciate your help earlier today. That's why I took the chance to introduce this beautiful place to you. It was willing to accept me, even though I didn't belong here. I've grown very fond of this place, and that makes me want to <laughs> share it with others. I'm a lawful resident. At least now I am. Hey, can you come closer? Closer, please. I have a question for you. Did you travel here alone? Oh, I see. sure whether you realize it or not. I took you through a very long scenic route and visited all kinds of places just now because... Well... Someone's been following you. Don't turn around. I'm certain that you're his target. He's been on our tail since we parted ways with Mr. Gallagher. I wondered whether he was a friend of yours, but my instincts told me he wasn't. He's about... 
five feet, nine inches tall, give or take. Judging from his strong build, it's clear that he's well trained. He walks in long strides, but his steps are light and barely audible. That way of walking doesn't leave footprints. He looks like a skilled fighter, the covert kind. He has large palms, yet his fingers are slender and nimble. I reckon he has experience using knives, like a short sword or a dagger. Do you know anybody like that? A maroon jacket, emerald eyes, dark blue hair. Ah, he's coming our way. Hey, well. If it isn't my most loyal customer, the Trailblazer guy. It's been such a long time, old friend. What a coincidence to run into you here. Oh my, I'm in luck today. Yes, it's none other than your old friend, Sampo. You're surprised to see me? <laughs> you know, it's thanks to you that I can be here. You helped your Rello 6 open up to the outside. Um, this gentleman is? Oh, Miss March, don't you remember me? After all the favors I did for you all in Bellabog? Firefly? I'm a stage performer from the Iris family. Oh, no wonder. I was just thinking, there's no way Miss March could change her appearance so dramatically in such a short time. It's my pleasure to meet you. My name is Sempo, and I'm an old pal of his. Ooh, seems like we're getting on the same wavelength now. Mr. Sampo, what's the purpose of your visit to Penacone? My purpose? <laughs> You're funny. What else can I do in Penacone? Well, I just hang around, daydream, and do the things that anyone on vacation would do. Speaking of which... Old pal, since fate brings us here, I'm obliged to give you a tour of this area. I've been watching you two for a long time. Miss Firefly does know Penacone well, but when it comes to entertainment for grown-ups, I think I can do much better. <sighs> entertainment for grown-ups? Looks like my analysis is spot on. <laughs> Follow me, you two. Let me give you a taste of the adult world. Well, um, uh, Mr. Sampo. Anything bothering you, Miss Firefly? Don't worry. This isn't going to involve anything illegal. 